We're on page 211 in Lectures in Systematic Theology. Page 211. By Henry Clarence Thiessen. When I started studying systematic theology, I had a real good teacher. His name was Dr. Martin Van Buren Canavan. And I was absolutely thrilled in it. I read the book the first week. I would read a book about, well, probably ten books a week when I was going to seminary and college. Just going all the time, reading, reading, reading. They would all, in all the classes I had, they would have a stack of books that you read in that class. And so I read all kinds of books on systematic theology. I can see why Brother Matt Canavan picked out this book because it's probably the most sound of all the books on systematic theology. I have Strong's, I have others that, that are very good. Strong's is a very, very, very good book. But he's a little more uh, what we call hyper-Calvinistic than what Mr. Thiessen is. On page 211, we've talked about angels, haven't we? We've studied several. The last class was about Satan and his devices, Satan and his attributes. Now, I wrote some words up here on the board. Uh, Sharon, you, can you read that word? That's right. <laughs> huh? Brother, brother, anyone here, Marilyn? Can you read that? It starts out with a ma'am. With an M? Yeah, that's a that's an M. That's a ma'am. Malek, 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 Malek means what, brother Ray? You remember? What is Malek? That's the Hebrew word for angel. It is a, a messenger or servant. It is a supernatural being, isn't it? Supernatural. And supernatural means what? Above man. Now, in the book of Hebrews, it says that God had made Jesus a little lower than angels. And actually it says Elohim. What do you mean lower than Elohim? Was Jesus God? Was Jesus God? Yes. Why did God make himself less than God? Because he was in the form of man. He was our Goel. Remember the word Goel? Kinsman Redeemer. He's our kinsman redeemer. And to be our kinsman redeemer, he had to be like us. So then he, he emptied himself of all of his dynamic divine powers, didn't he? Did Jesus do anything in his ministry, ever, in his ministry, that he grabbed a hold of his divine powers and used them? No, it was all through what? The through the Holy Spirit. And that's why to, to say that Jesus did these miracles by Beelzebub, you were blaspheming God. He said, you can say anything against the Son of Man you want to say, but when you blaspheme God and say that these tributes of God are related to Satan, that is blasphemy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We looked, and I'm teaching on the life of Muhammad. Yes. Um, okay, that word that you have written up there, the one on top, that's Moloch? Moloch. Moloch. M-A-L-A-K. And the second one is Abir. Abir. Okay, they're two separate words. Okay, they're two separate words. Abir is, it means mighty ones. Mighty ones. Abir does. Uh, Abir is, it's only used one time in, in Psalms. Uh, but it is a word for angel. Mighty ones. Now, are angels mighty? Yeah, yeah they are mighty. Yeah. How mighty? mighty enough. Huh? Supernatural. Okay, supernatural. And then we have the word angelos. 
Okay, and that's the Greek word, which means messenger, doesn't it? Euangelia. Euangelia. What does that mean? Remember that? Euangelia. Brother Ray, Euangelia. That's the gospel. The gospel means what? You, a prefix, that means good message. Good message, euangelia, gospel. Now, isongelos, it's isongelos, it also says in the New Testament that in the resurrection we will be like angels. Like angels, this means like angels. Mankind will be like angels. Now it says there that we, that, you know, when the Sadducees came to him, they didn't believe in anything supernatural, not God at all. They were basically what we might call uh, atheist or agnostics. And they said, in the resurrection, this woman mar was married to these five brothers and all of them had her whose wife will she be in the resurrection. He said, you err not knowing the scriptures, first of all, or the what? Remember what he said? You know, not knowing the scriptures are what? The power of God and the power of angels. For in resurrection, man does not marry like Isongelos, like the angels. Will man be supernatural in the resurrection? Will, will you be supernatural in the resurrection? The answer is uh, nay. Nay. Okay. But translated into English, it is yes. <laughs> that ought to make you think just a little bit. Okay. Yes, we will be supernatural because we will be outside of our bodies. Uh, Carol, when you walked through that door a while ago, I saw you open the door. Did you do that? Yeah. Now, in a, it, Jesus didn't have to do that, did he? Did he walk through walls? Yeah. Sure. Supernatural. I thought about dying a lot lately. Marilyn? What? I thought about dying a lot lately. Listen to this. And I thought about going to be with the Lord a lot. And how important things are here on this earth and everything. They really don't mean anything, do they? When we, I've looked at a lot of Maryland stuff there with her family and everything. I said, you may as well go throw it in the trash can because nobody cares anything about it. You're the only one in this world. Nobody else cares. Just dump it. I have dumped so much stuff because it doesn't really matter. And I thought about Star Trek. You know, I didn't really watch Star Trek very much, but I remember one thing. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Yeah. <laughs> they would be in a lot of trouble, all kinds of trouble. And they'd get over there. If they get in the right spot, they'd say, beam me up, Scotty. And golf he goes. Isn't that something? And you know the Lord's going to do that one of these days, whether in death or in life. Yeah. He said, well, it won't beat me up, Scotty. It'll beat me up, Lord. Beat me up. Well, we're going to be supernatural one of these days. We'll be like the angels. They're supernatural. But before we finish this work and go into the next project, which is anthropology, that is a Greek word, isn't it? It comes from anthropos, anthropos, and it comes from logos, which means the study. The study of mankind. But before we can study mankind, we have to study every other creature that God made because mankind is, a, is one of the lesser creations in all reality because we're fragile. We're fragile. Mm -hmm. Fragile. Did you have to eat something today to keep going? Do you have to take time to, to sleep? Unfortunately. I was up early this morning and up late last night. I was up late studying the, for this message and, and up early this morning studying for this message. 
because it was really, I mean, as I walk around and as I work, I was uh, sawing, sawing all those grapevines off yesterday and all the different things that I was doing. I was thinking about this lesson today as I was doing my work. How can I give this to you and to all those out there in such a way that it will be affect you for the rest of your life? Okay? Because this is very important. Angels are very important. Angels are important because we have good angels and we have bad angels, don't we? And we deal with good angels. How do you like the good angels? They've been good to you lately, Sharon. You've had nothing but praises today. Good angels. Good angels. And you got things that you didn't expect real fast. Woof, right in your lap. And I'm hoping this is what will happen with the house thing. <clears throat> I really hope. I'm tired of all this misery. <laughs> angels, good angels, as they deal with us, we're happy. Can take you from the dumps and sickness and, and danger and just protect you in so many ways. Use people to protect you. Use others to protect you. And you know how... When we're really in terrible need, which we always are on the website, here a while back when I went to Nevada, I had no money to get home. I had no money to get there. I had nothing to eat when I got there. But I had to go there, and I knew I was going to do a lot of recording up there, which I did. I was there alone, just taking care of it. Everything else was secondary. I said, Lord, I'm going up here, and I don't have any way back. There's somebody out there in the world someplace some angel out there, okay, that's got some money that they want to serve the Lord with. Please get with it right now. <laughs> because I have no way back. Well, I want to got there a $100 and then a $1,000 donation. I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. But yet, that's what I asked for, wasn't it? So God answers prayers. Mm -hmm. Does he deal with people? Does he use his spirit? Does he use angels to deal with people, comfort them, guide them? You know people that are lost? Pray for them. Pray for those people all over the world that hear these messages all the time. Because there are ministering spirits and angels all over, and there is the Holy Spirit dealing with their lives, all of them. Because this is supernatural. We live in a natural world. We don't know how God can be all over the world at the same time. And I'm so thankful that these messages can go all over the world. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell Brother Ray that. To <laughs> tape all of those messages. They mean something to people. You will touch people's lives with them. They're very important. They're important. Every message is important. Every question you ask is very important. People want to ask those questions wherever you are. Now, we don't want to make less of Satan than what he is, do we? Satan is not a force. He's not just bad. He's an originator of all bad and all evil. Let's look at it. On page 211, Satan employs various methods for the realization of his purpose. Since he cannot attack God directly, underline that Highlight it, do something with that. Satan cannot attack God directly because God is greater, isn't he? God is much greater. It's like a flea biting an elephant. He'll never know it. <laughs> he cannot attack God directly and he attacks God's master creation. Did he attack Jesus? Yes. yes. What form did Jesus was in? The form of a man. Yet he was God. Can you imagine God pouring himself into the human body to redeem us? Isn't that, isn't that love? Isn't that love in the extreme? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What a gift of love. What a sacrifice. 
We talk about us sacrificing? Well, that's nothing. <laughs> Look what God did. Does he give us an example of sacrifice? Giving? God cannot attack, or Satan cannot attack God directly. He attacks God's master creation, mankind. The methods by which Satan attacks us is by lying and people telling lies about us? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had anybody lie about you? Yeah. Have you ever anybody had plot against you? Have you ever thought about what they get for it? When somebody lies about you, what are they doing? No, They're trying to tear your character there. down and what are they going to get out of it? Nothing. Nothing yeah. Zero. If they stole from you, they'd at least get something. But when they steal your character, they hurt you, but they get nothing out of it. Tempting. Tempting. God tempting you. God tempting you with things and persons and passions and or, or Satan tempting you with all of these things. Robbing. How can Satan rob you? Brother Ray? Enjoy he can rob you of your joy. He can. Can he rob you of your rewards? Well, oh, yes, absolutely. He sure can. He can rob you of rewards. Mm -hmm. Can he harass you? <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Don't be a yes. Can he harass you? Can we get a restraining order again? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even work in this world. <laughs> the only restraining order we have is put on the armor of God. <laughs> you know, people break those restraining orders all times in real life, don't they? But at least you've got something to go on. Legally, we have the blood of Jesus. That's what we have legally. Harassing, hindering. Has Satan ever hindered your progress? How many times? Always? How about uh, sifting you like he did Peter? Have you ever been sifted? Sifted? You know what to do when you're sifted. Sifted, and is he an imitator? Jesus called out his church. How many churches did Satan call out? This name them. There's one truth. And all everything else is lies or partial lies. The closest thing is nearest to the truth. Just think about that. Closest thing? The closest things are those nearest to the truth. Mm -hmm. The most dangerous religions are those nearest to the truth. Most nearest mm -hmm. to the truth. Well, the Catholic Church, they don't use the Bible, do they? They condemn the Bible. They, do, they, they absolutely forbid the Bible because they were going contrary to the Bible. Right. So if you were looking as an outsider and looking at this situation, look at the history of the church history up here, the Bible was forbidden. Well, that group must not be from the Bible. Isn't that just, just plain common sense? If they forbid the Bible, if they burn the Bibles, Yet they say they're religion, and they say they are the religion, and they're killing all the other people and prosecuting, and now history looks at the Council on Nicaea and all of those different councils as the wonderful things. <clears throat> you know, Catholicism was real close to the truth when it began, wasn't it? While wow, they were Baptist. <laughs> and all of a sudden they went astray. <clears throat> How dangerous is mutilatism, Brother Ray? How dangerous is mutilatism? How dangerous is that? Very dangerous. Very dangerous, but it's really close to the truth. Isn't very, it? very close. Now, when you get something like Islam, that say the Bible is corrupted, that you can't trust anything in the Bible at all, well, you ought to have good enough sense, if you know anything about the Bible, to say, well, that's wrong. And what do they attack? The very person of God. 
There is no God but Allah. He has no companion. Number one, it's blasphemy. That is their code of faith, isn't it? Now, if you look in the book of Revelation, the mark of the beast is what? A blasphemous name. It's the name of the beast. Right. Just think about that for a while. The name of blasphemy. There is no God but Allah. There is no Jehovah. It is only Allah. And he has no companion. There is no Jesus. He has no son. Right off the bat, the first line is what? Blasphemy. If you knew your Bible, if you believe the Bible, then you'd know that was wrong. But how many so-called Christians, especially in prisons, have fallen for this thing? Because it tells you what? That you're on your own merits only. You don't have to... You, 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 you're, you're not responsible for Adam's sin. Boy, that just makes you feel better already, doesn't it? You're not, you're not accountable for Adam's sin, but you are, aren't you? You're dying, aren't you? Imitating. Accusing. Accusing. Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witnesses. What, what, what kind of a problem do they have? They, do they study the Bible? Oh, yes. Do they believe the Bible? Oh, yes. But the interpretation of the Bible, the interpretation of God, the interpretation of the Son of God, if you get rid of Jesus, you've lost salvation. There is no hope. So we have an imitation religion there, don't we? Because they do away with the person of Jesus. They make him supernatural only. Is it Michael, the archangel that became flesh and really dwelt among us? And he died on the cross of Calvary and whatever happened to his body, we do not know. What does that do? That does away with your hope of salvation altogether, doesn't it? Smiting with disease, does, does Satan ever smite people with disease? We have plenty of examples of that in the Bible. Does he ever try to possess people? Yeah. Uh... Does he kill and devour? Does he smite with terrible weather patterns and things? Just look in the Bible and find out how Satan is the god of the air. It's called the prince and the power of the air. Over the, the, over the forces, the natural forces of the earth. And then when Satan does something bad, they said it's an act of God. <laughs> when we have a tornado or, or a hurricane or, or some terrible blast of cold, it's an act of God. No, it's not an act of God. It's an act of Satan. He says here, the believer must not let Satan gain advantage over him by remaining ignorant of his devices. Are you knowledgeable of his devices? Kind of be. Be sober, vigilant, and resist him. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Ephesians 4, 17. James 4 and 7. Over there yonder where you were today, Vincent. Right in that area, in that neighborhood. In the book of James. We should not think or speak lightly of Satan. He is powerful. He can ruin your life. He can damage you if you allow him. Can he do that? Can he? Yeah. Now, let's look at one little thing before we go on to, on to the next study, which is anthropology. The destiny of good angels. Marilyn, were you a slave most of your life? Most. Most of your life. Yes, you were a slave. You had no rights. no rights. Okay? No rights at all. You were given what you were supposed to eat, and that was all, and you said what you, you, you were very limited in everything that you did. Yeah. You were co totally controlled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's look at, look at angels. Angels are called what? Servants. Think about the good angels. Do you think the good angels are happy being servants? Slaves? Yeah, I think they would be. Why? Because they're happy. 
Why are they happy? They're doing God's bidding. They're happy to do God's bidding. They're sharing in His glory, aren't they? Now, in times past, people wanted to be a servant for the king. There were families of people in England and France and different places, Belgium, Germany, uh, Denmark, all these places. They were places where they, they were kings in all these countries, weren't they? And to be able to live in that palace was a great what? Honor. Guess what? Guess what? If you lived in the palace, you got to eat the king's food, didn't you? What about over there when the, the Hebrew children went into uh, Babylon? They said, you come in here and eat of my food. You eat up from my table and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You eat from my table. You got to sleep in that nice home. Not out in some cave someplace or some shelter or 12 by 12 cabin on Shadowfish Creek. <laughs> <laughs> You get to live in a palace. <clears throat> a palace. A celestial palace. And do bidding and see all of the glories of God. The wonderful things. The ministering spirits. The guardian angels. We've looked at them. Guardian angels are from what realm? Guardian angels are from what realm? Okay. Lucifer's realm. Did you realize that? Guardian angels are from Lucifer's realm. Let's look at this again. I've driven this. I've put this pie up here a thousand times. Brother Ray, you like that thing, don't you? We have Gabriel, we have Michael, and we have Lucifer. Lucifer was over what realm? Material. The material. Okay, Michael is over what realm? The spiritual. And Gabriel's over what realm? Intellectual or information. Now let's look at it. In here, among these, these are angels, these are spirits in these realms. Okay? Now, Lucifer, not all of his angels went with him, or we wouldn't have any garden angels, would we? This is material realm, but one third of them went. One third of these went. One third of these went. The angels that are over the physical realm, which you live in, you live in the normal, the, what we call the just normal, what we know, the three-dimensional world that we live in. Even though we live in a three-dimensional world, we're living in ten dimensions. And in those other seven dimensions, we have angels and spirits walking around freely and coming into our normal realm, physical realm. What spiritual help we get from Michael's group. What information we get is from Gabriel's group. The false information, whoever appeared to Muhammad and Joseph Smith, if anybody appeared to them at all, it was from what realms? The fallen realms. The lies, the imitation realm. The destiny of good angels, of course, is that they will always serve God and they will always be with God and always sharing in the glorious surroundings of God. So even though they are servants or what we might call slaves, they are very, very well kept. Yes, Brother Ray. You talked about test the spirits, okay, to see if it's from God. Yes. When it means test the spirit, I mean... You, you try the test, spirit. You try the spirit, that, that means what the doctrinal teachings are? Or? Yeah, try the spirits. Muhammad should have done that a little better. He asked his wife. No, that's wrong. Yeah, that was <laughs> the wrong thing to do. <laughs> oh, cover me, cover me. A uh, demon has appeared unto me. And she said, oh, it wasn't a demon, it's uh, the angel Gabriel. He's given you a new religion. Yeah. What had happened? It wasn't Gabriel. 
somebody else. Why, Joseph Smith said the angel Moroni visited him, and wherever he got that name, you know, visited him. And told him that God was dissatisfied with all. Herbert Rongsong says for 1,800 years no one has preached the gospel. Yeah. Yet Jesus said, you are Peter, a small stone, but upon this gigantic foundation of rock I'll be building my church and the gates of hell cannot wrestle her down. Mm -hmm. Cannot wrestle her down. Cannot. Cannot. Wrestle her down. Well, the destiny of good angels, uh, they will be serving God in the new heaven and new earth and with us. Do you know that uh, mankind will judge angels? Why will mankind judge angels? Why will God's church judge angels? What is the what in what do we have in common with them? With angels? What do Brother Vincent, what do you have in common with an angel? Well, serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not the answer I'm looking for. What do you have in common with angels, uh, Jaron? There's the story right there. Freedom. Why can mankind judge angels? Why are we qualified to judge angels? Because we have volition. Oh, there's it. Does that do away with uh, superlapsarianism, by the way? Because you don't have free will, do you? You're created as you are. Did God ever create anything bad? Did he create Lucifer as bad? No. But he had, gave him volition. Okay? Are you learning something today? Are you going to carry something with you today? The destiny of evil angels. Where are they going to be? The lake of fire. The lake of fire. Eternal hell. They will exist... Like asbestos, they won't burn up, but they will be in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Matthew 25, 41, 2 Peter 2 and 4, and Jude 6. And of course, it says here that Christ's believers will have part in judging and condemning the evil angels, 1 Corinthians 6 and 3. We will because we both have volition. There is no other grounds by which we could judge angels if, if we did not have volition, is there? Well, that's the basis. The destiny of Satan. That volition, that choice is given by God to us. That's right. That God made man in his sovereign image, did he not? Genesis 1.26. That's what it said, let him have dominion. Let him have sovereignty. Let him have sovereignty. Let him have sovereignty. Do angels have sovereignty? Volition, yes. They chose their eternal destiny. The history of, day, of, of Satan and fallen angels is uh, what we call contemporary. They're together. They're, the destiny of them are the same. Luke 10, 18, Isaiah 14, 12, Ezekiel 28, and 2 Peter 2 and 4. We first see him in heaven. We see the, the fall of angels. How many Edens are there in the Bible? How many Edens are there, Carol? Two. Edens. How many? Two. Two. Two Edens. One in eternity and one in space and time where Adam was put. At least he was there. And then by means of a serpent, he became the agent in the fall of mankind, didn't he? In the garden, on the earth, epitaste gaze, not the one in eternity. We find him in the air, don't we? Satan? Tornadoes, storms, ice, cold, hot, all of those things, extremes. Just think about Eden for a while. How cold do you think it got there? They didn't have to have any clothes, did they? All comfy. All the time. Not too hot, not too cold. But after 
they were kicked out of Eden, by the sweat of your nose you shall make your living. When I was up in Nevada, the other day, it was about 50 or 60 in the daytime, but I was dealing with 130 and 40 degree temperatures because I was burning all that brush. My clothes were soaking wet every day. I could wring them out. My socks, I wrung out. My hat, my gray felt hat, is all disfigured with sweat. I could take it and sling. It's like I was in a rainstorm, but it was me. A gallon or two of sweat every day. By the sweat of your nostrils, you will earn your living. I, I remembered that curse. <laughs> we find him in the air, and we find him in, on the earth. We find him in heaven. Job 1, 6 and 7, 2, 1 and 2, Ephesians 2 and 2, and 6 and 12. He was cast down to earth, and we have the destruction of the earth, don't we? In Genesis 1 and 2. Barashith bara Elohim eth Hashemayim without the arts. In one of the beginnings, he had created God, the heavens and the earth. We ha arts haya tu huuhu. We hoshaka elpene hamayim. We rua Elohim meripacheth elpene hamayim. And the earth, she had become formless and void. And there was darkness and chaos over the faces of the earth. The faces of the deep. And then it says, Spirit God, Ruah Elihim Meripachet, suffered over, mourned over the faces of the waters. And he began to gather back together and to reconstruct the earth. And to make it now with a new master which would be mankind and then mankind handed it over to Satan again didn't he? and then the Lord Jesus Christ had to come upon the earth to redeem it back to get the title deed back <coughs> Satan is not co-powerful with God <coughs> Satan is not omnipotent nor omnipresent even though he has a lot of helpers Satan has always had a lot of excess de success dealing with people hasn't he with false religions God founded one, he founded lots. Ten times more. <clears throat> Ten times more. He's had a lot of success, hasn't he? When people are willing to go that way. Jim Jones, look at that. You think about Muhammad. Islam has killed 170 plus million people. Catholicism can kill 50 to 100 million. These are religious wars. We have most wars in the world have been fought over religion, but it's false religion. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that. God's told people don't go out killing each other because you don't believe right. I speak hard against Islam, but don't I? Mm -hmm. Against Catholicism. Against all forms of idolatry because I, I need I think that they need to be said that it is wrong we need to say it's wrong we need to point out why it's wrong we need to know what to really believe and why to believe it have you are you more settled now with angels than you ever were in your life you got to figure it out a little bit better I got news for you. You're going to learn a lot more. As, you, as you've got this foundation in the future, you are going to be able to know more because of where you are with it now. You can know more. And you can be inoculated against error. Huh? Angels, uh, invisibly work with the stone 
But sometimes they physically come into the world. We don't know that. We know that they're there. We know that happens. Marilyn kept thinking I was an angel in her life. Every now and then she'd ask me, are you really, are you an angel? Do you ask me that? You did. How many times? Several times. Because nobody ever treated her good before in her life. So she thought, I must be an angel. I'm not. <laughs> not an angel. Not close. Never played an angel. Not, a not an angel. <clears throat> I just, God used me in that way. We see, now the author says here, that Satan is going to be placed into the bottomless pit, and he's in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, isn't he? And he said the word abison is translated uh, incorrectly. Now, I don't know why he, why he says that. What does abison mean? You remember, Sharon? Abison. Abison. Brother? No, no bottom. No bottom. So what is it? The bottomless. Wherever this place is, whether it's out... Uh, Brother Hubbard used to teach me, he said, heaven is up there in the third heaven, and hell and, and Hades and all of this is out there in the third heaven down below the earth, down below the earth, down under the earth, not in the earth, but down below the earth in the third heaven the other way. Now we find that there's black holes out there, and black holes fit, scientifically fit, the description of hell. There's no light. It sucks up all the light. Once you get in a black hole, you can't get out. It's forever that way, and it just continues to exist. Everything that's sucked into a black hole never ceases to exist, but it never gets out. Isn't that a, quite a description of hell? You cannot escape it. We see all of these things. We find out that in the end, even though Satan is extremely powerful, and we have to put up with him a whole lot today, that we're not going to have to put up with him forever, are we? Page 212 says that he's going to go into eternal lake of fire and he will suffer greatly. The Seventh-day Adventists teach. Now they, they deny this and then they teach it. Seventh-day Adventists teach that no man goes to hell. That Satan suffers in hell for all mankind because he was the originator of sin. That all the rest of mankind who do not believe simply go out of existence, as Buddha would have you think. He wanted to go out of existence. That's what nirvana was to Buddha. He didn't want to be resurrected. He didn't want to be uh, reincarnated into a flea again or an elephant or a tiger or, or a moose or whatever. They're not going to be reincarnated in anything. Mary Ellen White believes that soul sleeping that you're going to stay asleep forever if you're bad. But the Bible teaches us that there is eternal hell, doesn't it? Eternal hell. I got to preach in a Seventh-day Adventist church one time. Can you imagine that? I preached a funeral in a Seventh-day Adventist church. And I knew this man that died. He was a Seventh-day Adventist, but he believed in Jesus. And you know what I said? He's not here today. He's not there today. He's not asleep today, but he is in heaven today. Mm -hmm. He sees Jesus today. <clears throat> he had that right. He had Jesus right. Yes. Do you have Jesus right? Is Jesus really the God of the Bible? Is he Jehovah of the Old Testament? Have you believed in him? Have you asked him to forgive your sins and put his merits? There's nothing you can do in this world to get saved or keep saved. It's only by the grace of God that we are saved and only by what Jesus did are we saved. Forever. Just think about that. Eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. Eternal salvation eternal we will be eternally saved and looking down and don't marry, worry about me Marilyn if I go on before you do because I will be looking down 
Amen. and not worrying about anything else ever again, <laughs> nor sweating a gallon of, or two of sweat a day. We see Jesus as our Savior. Islam looks at Jesus as just a prophet. Jehovah's Witness look at Jesus just as what? As an angel. Catholicism looks Jesus on that cross all the time. He's not on that cross anymore, people. It only happened once. One time, Hapox, he died for us. And Mary is not our intercessor, it is Jesus. Every false religion takes away from the person of Jehovah God, Jesus. Amen. Everyone removes some glorious attribute of his. Jesus is our Savior, and he is our Redeemer, and he is our Advocate, and he is our Comforter in all everything in life. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know him today. And if you know Jesus, trust in Jesus and follow him and put on your armor. Vincent, what verse, what uh, song do we have today? 564. 564 is the invitation today. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, you can have Jesus. He's there for you. But if you leave this world without Jesus, you'll never have Jesus except as your judge. That's all. <clears throat> send this message out to you your, in your hand we, we ask you to send it to the world that I pray that somebody that listens to this message today will be saved like so many years ago when that girl that was a preacher's wife and a, and a, and a Sunday school teacher that heard the gospel truly was convicted that she had never been saved I pray, Father, there may be another Jennifer out there, that there be another one like this, that, that hears your word today and hears the gospel pure and clear. And, Father, help us to understand that there are forces out there that fight us every day, but you are the greatest force in the universe, that we have to trust in you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. We ask you to forgive us, me especially. Amen. Amen.